Okay, now I've taken the piece out and I sprayed it with two very thin light coats of Krylon just to make sure I had coverage over the whole piece. And I'm going to take some fairly aggressive tape. I'm going to put a strip across there. And I'm going to rub it down really good. Okay, and then I'm going to peel it off like a band-aid. Alright, I'm confident now that I can mask on this and it's not going to peel up. Um, it's a, it's a crapshoot with these paints. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Using a test piece is, is everything. If I was going to go ahead and demonstrate painting the model, I would have done spray the model, spray this, spray the model, spray this, spray the model, dry, 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 spray, you know, all that, clear, clear coat. I would have kept repeating everything I'm doing on my test piece. Then I would use my test piece to see if the masking's okay, if it's cured good like I expect. And then I'd be pretty confident that I can mask my model and not have a total disaster. So that's where we're at. Now next is going to be, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a mask on here. Okay, so I got my mask cut. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the flame out of it because I'm using the reverse part of the flame in this case. So I can paint in the flame. And get rid of that and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of outside of the box here that I drew just peels right off nothing to it all right and that's you know what I would apply to the car obviously I would if I was putting it on the hood of the car or whatever I would draw the flame out print it on paper and keep adjusting and stretching and changing the flame until it fit the way I wanted it to on the model in this case I'm just doing this little sample piece so I'm just doing a simple flame that's not important. I mean, I'll talk about all this masking and flames and stuff uh, in another video. But anyway, so it's kind of critical uh, that how tacky this stuff is. You know, you just got to get it started. But what's happening here is that I'm not distorting the mask. And it can be separate bits and pieces and all, and we'll keep it all in place, you know. And I'm just going to kind of stick it in the middle of my test piece, rub it back down. All right. And there you go, I haven't distorted the mask. Um, and then I'll go back and make sure that everything's nice and attached. Cover the rest of it up. You know. Okay. Now, imagine doing this on the model. Imagine it being tailored and fit to the model. You know. So now what I have is I have that pearl coat that pearl blue glistening color and then these flames would be outlined on the hood so now you can go to town you can do you can fade you can do shadows shadows you know whatever you want to do um, but the critical thing is you've got to put it on thin if you don't put it on as thin as you possibly can you're gonna have big ridges around all this and you can't get rid of it like I said in earlier videos, you can't really sand this stuff very well, especially a pearl or a chameleon or a metallic. If you sand any of those types of colors, even with spray cans, it's going to be an obvious blemish where you've sanded. You're going to see where you've sanded. So you got one shot. So what do you got to do? You got to over thin the paint. How do you overthin the paint? Well, you're going to have to use Future is the only thing that you can use with Createx to get it thin, 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 you know. Even the transparent colors, you still got to thin the heck out of them to get them. If you've watched any of Dr. Cranky's videos, you, you probably would understand now when he's using House of Color how thin that paint is where you can layer. We're just trying to do one layer, you know, on top of the paint. And if we're lucky, we can blend it, we can put it on thin enough, there's going to be a bit of a ridge, but then we can hit it with enough clear coat that it's going to it's gonna work out. So, you know, it's a crapshoot. We'll see. And in order to put as little paint as possible and get an effect, I'm going to take the Chameleon Lilac, which is like a purple. And I don't know if this is going to show. It'll show when I do the final reveal of it. And I'm going to ghost flame it with this purple. Yeah, it's sputtering a little. I probably could have thinned it a little more. I thinned it the same, but that just goes to show you how unpredictable these paints can be. There it goes. A little better. Must have had a little particle in there or something. 
but I'm going to put it on as thin as I can. No, I'm not trying to get total coverage. Remember, heat dry. Dried up. Put another layer on it. Make sure I'm spraying. And go back over it. Boom, stop. Okay, it's good and dry. Um, I could go back now and 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 tint the tips of the flames. Just kind of hit those with some tint to bring it out. Um, but I'm trying to do a ghost flame here, so it's I'm just going to leave it. And in the light, you're going to see the, the results. All right. Now, no matter how, depending on how the light hits it, You're going from that blue to the, the purple. I could have faded it here and made it just kind of blend into the purple, come out of nowhere, and then go purple. But hopefully you can see that. You can get it to a point where you don't even notice, and then once, depending on how the light hits it, the purple and the blue come out. It almost turns a greenish color. I mean, it's just ghost flames. Now, of course, at this point, you want to clear coat it. You need to protect this paint. Uh, any, if you accidentally scratch it, rub it, it's real attractive to the dust, as I mentioned. So I'm going to take it and clear coat it. Clear coated this thing now. I, I put it on too fast, too quick, and too much, so it's all kind of it has bubbled and blemished on me. But the point I'm trying to show here is that. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get this in. There's a ridge. I mean, there's a definite, there you go. There's a definite ridge. I put that second coat on as light as I possibly could, as thin as I could, and did it in just two passes. And you can see, even after a big heavy layer of clear coat, that you still got this ridge. So you really can't do too much more than you can do with the spray can with these paints. And you'll see like where people sprayed spoons with all these different colors and tried different clear coats and tried all this stuff. What you're not seeing when you look at that beautiful sparkly spoon with this great clear coat is how thick that is. And the fact that they did not cure every layer of paint underneath. They just sprayed until they got good coverage, which this paint will do. And then you spray it with the clear to put a hard shell on it like an M&M candy. So you've got this hard shell and then you've got this soft uncured paint underneath that will peel off if you tried to mask or do anything with it. Uh, you know, if you're lucky, the shell will protect it. Um, but I see, you know, a lot of people are fooled. They're like, "Ooh, I'm just going to start using Createx because look at that finish and shine and glistening." And this is an alternative. It's going to react like spray cans. It's going to leave an edge like spray cans when you do any type of graphics. You can fade like you can with spray cans and kind of hide that delineation of colors. When you can spend just a little more and get something like Wicked Auto Air that you can, especially Wicked, Wicked can be very over thinned, way over thinned. But these paints, even with the transparents and stuff, even thinning them way down with the future and all that, you're still, you're not going to get a thin, um, nice thin layer like something like Dr. Cranky gets with House of Color. You're not going to be able to do multiple layers and graphics and, and flames and all and then when you're done it looks like just a solid glass surface and everything's all beautiful underneath. You can spray down a big gloss and hit it with clear coat and look awesome. But try to go beyond that point and that's what this video is about. Um, it's very limiting. Um, just think of them as, as an alternative to a spray can. Thanks for watching. Any comments, questions, whatever. And any improvements that you can find. Anything that anybody can, you know, add to this to help would be great. I mean, I'm not opposed to criticism, comments, whatever, corrections. Uh, I just want to say thanks for watching. It's been a lot of work, but it was, kind of, I guess, worth it to get this out there. 
and uh, this surely should get people kind of on their way and help them know a lot more about using these Createx uh, t-shirt type paints you know um, and I'll see y'all in the next video